Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the discussion on objective assessment of fabric handle characteristics to assess the tactile responses of fabrics. Okay. And we have discussed the subjective assessment in our earlier talk and we have started the objective assessment. And basically commercially as we have mentioned that there are two uh, set of instruments available for objective assessment. One is uh, Kawata uh, evaluation systems KES and another is that uh, fabric assurance for uh, by simple testing fast uh, system. So, the correlation between uh, subjective and objective assessments are there that basically that uh, any subjective assessment uh, we can correlate with the by measuring the objective fabric characteristics like uh, mainly uh, low stress mechanical uh, characteristics, tensile shear, bending, compression and uh, fabric surface characteristics. All this uh, we can correlate with the tactile responses like uh, smoothness, fullness, crispness, hardness and which ultimately we get the tactile sensations. So, Kawata evaluation system for fabrics, it has got four different modules KESF 1, KESF 1 which measures the tensile and uh, shear related characteristics at a low stress level and uh, KESF 2 which measures the bending related characteristics, 3 measures the compressional characteristics and fourth is a measurement of surface friction and surface roughness. So, we will uh, discuss uh, all these uh, instruments, all these modules one by one and uh, their uh, all the parameters of what they measure, their principles in details we will be measuring okay. and uh, their uh, test parameters. So, the KESF 1 uh, where fabric sample uh, fabric specimen is clamped between two jaws. One jaw is uh, as we have mentioned it is a, a drum which rotates uh, both clockwise and anti clockwise direction and which uh, by rotation it imparts tensile load. So, the fabric uh, is uh, fixed in one jaw which is the drum and uh, a constant tension is applied. Uh, which is 10 gram force per centimeter just to keep the fabric in a straight condition and it is done by weighting system where it is attached to the drum and other jaw which is attached with the uh, slider which is uh, for application of shear force. Okay. So, it uh, so this is the schematic diagram of the system where this one uh, dotted uh, this one is a uh, fabric specimen and it is attached with a jaw that is a drum the jaw is fixed on a drum another jaw is this one which is placed on a slider so the rotation of the drum imparts tensile uh, load and uh, this uh, and the sliding of the this jaw other jaw is uh, it imparts the shear load and as this drum rotates because when because they uh, this shear and uh, uh, this tensile mode they cannot work actually simultaneously one at a time we can get. So, this uh, for tensile load application this uh, drum has to rotate clockwise so that it the fabric gets extended and the amount of load applied is measured by uh, there is a torque sensor the tensile force detector which is torque sensor and that uh, rotates and it measures the torque applied and ultimately we uh, can get the tensile force applied on the fabric another measurement is that uh, the extension which is uh, detected by there is a sensor tensile strain sensor 
which is actually which measures the, uh, the angle of rotation of this drum. From there, if we know the diameter of this drum, we can convert it to uh, strain. On the other hand, the other side, this uh, slider uh, moves uh, laterally, okay, which is parallel to the drum to impart the shear force and uh, the, the force required to slide is measured, the, measured by this shear force detector. So, this uh, it measures the uh, amount of force required and the amount of slide that is angle of shear can be measured by the, uh, the displacement of this slider which is measured by this shear strain detector. This angle we can measure if we know the distance uh, between the drum and the slider and amount of slide. So, we can measure the shear angle. So, that way we can get the four different parameters we get one is the tensile force we get, tensile strain we get, shear force we get, shear strain we can get. And another thing this, this drum they it rotates clockwise for extension and for recovery it uh, rotates anti clockwise. So, the, here in, uh, in uh, Kawabata system this, this gives total complete loading and unloading curve. So, this is true for shear also. So, shear it uh, gets the shearing when it moves from left to right direction and similarly when we uh, get uh, it moves from uh, right to left it is a recovery shear recovery. So, tensile force uh, is uh, measured in terms of torque as we have mentioned, tensile strain, angle of rotation of drum we can measure, shear force uh, by force transducer, transducer and shear strain displacement of the slider. So, that way we can get and ultimately we can get the complete curve like let us see the animation here. Here in this uh, the instrument as we know that it works in both tensile and shear mode. So, first let us see the if it works in tensile mode. So, where the slider is uh, fixed slider does not move only the this uh, drum moves. So, when drum is moving clockwise direction it is actually fabric gets extended and when the drum moves uh, anti clockwise direction the the extent it is it it uh, returns ok. So, let us see once again see it is a moving clockwise direction. So, uh, the uh, displacement uh, the extension is increasing and load is increasing. So, it is actually it will go up to the preset uh, limit of say 500 gram per centimeter that is a preset limit is maximum limit is there and after that it will automatically return to its original position. So, we ultimately get loading uh, extension and return this curve loading unloading curve we will be getting and this is the this is um, the uh, tensile curve from tensile graph we get basically three parameters we get one is uh, it is a W t which is tensile energy tensile energy W t it is a it is a KESF system we denote this value W t W t means the energy required during tensile uh, extension and that uh, that is nothing but uh, it is a um, uh, area under the loading curve. Okay. Similarly, it is a linearity L t linearity is uh, expressed in terms of L t L t means it is a tensile energy it is a tensile energy this area under the this uh, loading curve the total area under the loading curve divided by the area this area sorry area under the loading curve divided by the this total area of this triangle a o a o b this triangle if the curve that means if the fabric follows pure hooks law then this linearity will be 1 that way so what is the how much it's deviated from the uh, linearity that it shows okay maximum value will be 
1 ok. So, W t means that area under the loading curve divided by this area total area it is always less than linearity will be always less than 1. So, though that if it is close to 1 that means, it, it will give you give us the indication it, it is a totally elastic it, it, it is within elastic region. So, that way that we can get idea about the loading unload, loading behavior of the what is the behavior and third one is the resilience. Resilience is nothing but area under the recovery curve that is R recovery curve and divided by area under the loading curve it is expressed in terms of it is in terms of percentage. So, if uh, linearity so, uh, re resilience is 100, uh, 100 percent what does it means? It means that loading and unloading it, it follows the same curve same uh, path ok. So, that way we can uh, get the, the three parameters from this tensile uh, curve and uh, let us see the this is the uh, when it more moves in shear mode ok in uh, shearing mode we will see see that it, it is uh, the slider is uh, moving sideways ok. And now it is moving slider is moving uh, back now we will see once again. So, so slider is moving towards from left to right. So, there is a shear deformation and the uh, it is a shear force ok shear stress and shear strain it is shear strain in terms of angle. Okay. So, it is uh, moving and it is uh, coming back again and again it is uh, going back. So, this is the initial position. So, this way we will get a shear hysteresis curve this curve is shear hysteresis. Okay. So, here the slider uh, moves uh, uh, sideways. Now, we let us see the shear stiffness g shear stiffness is expressed in terms of g. So, which is actually slope of curve between 0 degree and 2.5 degree. So, between 0 degree and 2.5 degree what is the initial slope of the curve that is called shear stiffness. So, if the stiffness is high the slope will be high. So, so that is why uh, this is the shear stiffness and uh, next is that that uh, hysteresis of shear. So, hysteresis of shear which is expressed in terms of 2 h g at uh, if it is at 0 0.5 degree shear angle. So, this is the these are the shear angle this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, here at 5 degree and it is a 0 0.5 degree at 0 0.5 degree what is the hysteresis the distance between the uh, vertical distance between the loading and unloading curve in that that, st that means shear stress difference in shear stress in uh, in the loading direction unloading direction at angle 0 0.5 degree that's uh, that's expressed in terms of 2 hg uh, another is the next another term is 2 hg 5 when the shear it is a shear hysteresis at 5 degree this is the 5 degree at 5 degree shear strain the difference is uh, what is the, dif the difference is expressed in terms of the 2 h g 5 that is the hysteresis. So, the, this um, three parameters we get from here and three parameters from the tensile uh, characteristics. So, K E S F 1 gives total six parameters. So, uh, this six parameters are used in uh, expressing the this characteristics is expressing the tactile characteristics fabric handle we will discuss. Okay. Now, this uh, fabric that we have seen this uh, there are uh, two different types of curves we get and we can uh, get uh, six different characteristics. So, the settings here is a rate of extension is 0 0.1 millimeter per second that is a fixed ok. That at that rate it is a loading the uh, tensile characteristics if we measure that means, at that uh, rate it, it will uh, the drum will rotate ok. And uh, the sample size is lengthwise it is a short lengthwise it is a 5 centimeter and uh, widthwise it is a 20 centimeter that this is the if you see this length is 5 centimeter and widthwise it is a 20 centimeter that is the 
fabric specimen size and uh, maximum tension is 5 Newton per centimeter that is the uh, maximum tension uh, is uh, up to that tension it goes and then this uh, drum gets signal from the um, load sensor and it uh, starts uh, returning. So, that is the maximum and accordingly it, uh, it keeps on uh, rotating it uh, repeats. Now, test parameter as we have seen the elongation at 5 Newton per uh, centimeter tension E m is expressed in terms of percentage elongation it is uh, and uh, a energy under the loading curve is required to extend the fabric specimen to 5 Newton per centimeter tension is expressed in terms of joule per square meter. Linearity is unitless as we have discussed and tensile resilience R t is expressed in terms of percentage. Okay. These are the parameters which we get from tensile characteristics along with their units. Similarly, so these are the units uh, extension in terms of percentage, energy in terms of Newton meter or and uh, or joule per square meter and linearity unitless and tensile resilience it is term in terms of percentage. And if we see the shear characteristics the sample size specimen size will be same, but same specimen we use, but here sliding speed is approximately 0.4 millimeter per second that is the sliding speed and maximum shear angle is 140 milli radian it is typically around plus minus 8 degree that at that uh, up to that angle. So, we take the value up to 5 degree measure, but it goes the curve goes up to 8 degree the hysteresis which we have seen it is up to 5 degree okay. and constant uh, sample tension uh, is a 0.1 Newton per centimeter the same as that in tensile it is initial uh, tension at this tension it is kept constant for shear just to keep the specimen tight otherwise if the specimen is uh, in slack condition we will not get any shear force. Okay. So, this is these are the characteristics and the test parameters which we get we have already discussed we get the three parameters shear rigidity at 39.4 milli radian 2.25 degree shear strain it is expressed in terms of Newton per meter. Shear hysteresis it is at 8.7 milli radian it is 0.5 degree angle which is expressed in 2 by 2 Hg and shear hysteresis at 5 degree 2 Hg 5 is expressed in terms of Newton per meter. So, this so here we get all this in KASF we get all these parameters and Now, we will discuss the principle for KESF 2. So, this uh, module it measures the bending rigidity bending characteristics of fabric. Here we can see the fabric is uh, play again gripped with the help of two jaws one jaw it is a strain this is this measure uh, it is a torque sensor is there this torque sensor it is here which is gripped another jaw is which is actually make movement okay, bending arrangement. So, one is torque sensor another is bending arrangement okay. and here is the fabric specimen. So, one jaw is attached with the bending arrangement. So, this is the bending arrangement and it moves along with, the, with this system. So, total if this system if this this, uh, this is uh, attached with the it gives uh, gets drive from the motor as it moves due to this arrangement this total bending arrangement it uh, takes the fabric uh, the fabric sample this it, it actually it bends like this and again it comes back it bends and comes back. Okay. So, th this is the way uh, this work actually and uh, the other jaw is connected with the torque sensor which detects the torque value of the steel wire this is steel wire it is uh, hanging on the steel wire so, steel wire uh, during bending the space. So, if we can measure the torque, so we can convert it in terms of 
the force measurement. So, bending of force and uh, bending and by this bending arrangement we can measure the, the amount of bending or in terms of angle or something. The curvature of bending the it is a it is a basically whatever the curvature we can measure if we know the distance and if we know the movement we can measure the curvature the in the carved uh, area we can what is the movement from there we can measure the curvature of bending is obtained from the uh, bending arrangement and the fabric specimen is bent with the help of bending arrangement between minus 2.5 per centimeter to plus 2.5 that is the curve at that curve within that curvature it uh, bends. So, that means, the fabric uh, moves in the forward direction and also at the backward direction. So, if we see the animation you can see, see this is the arrangement and due to this arrangement fabric makes it, uh, it bends. Okay. This is a, this uh, due to this, this bending of this movement of this uh, jaw gives the, the curvature the x axis and uh, here it gets uh, what uh, due to the bending the other other jaw uh, due to this uh, torque sensor it gets the torque value which is converted in terms of bending moment. Okay. So, bending uh, so we can see the bending force we can get okay. now just try to see this is the bending other other direction again it is coming back in this way it moves. So, we can see and ultimately we get different uh, parameters of bending. Now, let us see what are the parameters. Here we get two parameters one is the uh, B that is slope between 0.5 and 1.5 curvature. So, this is the so between 0.5 and 1.5 what is the curvature? we can get we can express in terms of b uh, another is 2 hb the hysteresis at 1 centimeter this is at this value what is the hysteresis so we get is bending hysteresis and bending rigidity so bending two terms we get b and 2 hb so here again uh, setting and loading condition is that the rate of bending is 0.5 per centimeter per second. So, this is the curvature 0 0.5 at the 0 0.5 curvature per second at that rate. Sample size again it is a 20 centimeter in length and 1 centimeter in width. So, that uh, way fabric is bent on that maximum curvature is plus minus 2.5 centimeter per centimeter okay. that is a um, maximum uh, curvature. So, test parameters what we get we have already mentioned that uh, curvature in terms of B we get. So, slope between 0 0.5 and 1.5 curvature and bending hysteresis at uh, plus minus 1 curvature so 2 h p it is expressed in terms of milli Newton. Okay. Now, coming to the KSF 3 system this is actually it is a it measures the compressional characteristics at low stress level. So, here the fabric is compressed between two surfaces one is a anvil which is actually on which the fabric is placed another is pressure foot and the fabric specimen is placed on the anvil and the pressure is increased with the help of pressure foot while it is continuously monitoring the thickness. So, uh, by the thickness detector. So, ultimately we get uh, thickness versus pressure curve and compressive pressure is detected by the compressive force indicator actually that is the many any load uh, indicator load cell we can get. So, if we see the animation. So, this is the compressional uh, module KSF 3 mod module here uh, this one is anvil it is a plate on which fabric sample is uh, specimen is placed and this is uh, the pressure foot okay. and the uh, compressional 
force detector it is connected with the anvil and here is a it is a thickness detector which uh, actually it uh, it uh, drives the here is a drive arrangement which actually rotates and due to rotation the this pressure foot uh, moves up and down and uh, this is uh, due to the rotation of this uh, a thickness detector we get the thickness value and they are interlinked. So, as soon as a maximum uh, pressure is reached this is uh, the sig uh, signal is sent to the motor and it, it uh, reverse. So, in this way it moves up and down and compression and recovery takes place. Okay. Let us see. So, the fabric is placed between anvil and uh, pressure foot. And now the compression due for the compression, the this uh, drive it is uh, started, it is uh, going uh, upward, and then again after reaching certain predetermined force, and it comes backward. So in this way, it uh, moves upward and downward. We can get compression and recovery curve. And from here, if we see, we get uh, one three parameters. We get here typically and um, in addition to that we this parameter we get the thickness value also. So, L c is the linearity of compression curve, it is similar to the linearity of the tensile curve. So, linearity of compression curve is area under compression curve by the area this this area this triangle area ok, it is a it is a T o T T 0 A T M. Okay. T 0 means you can say this is the T 0 and this is T M okay. and uh, this uh, at uh, thickness at 0 almost uh, lower pressure thickness and it is a maximum thickness. So, this, this uh, triangle and the ratio between this area under this curve and this area of this triangle gives the linearity. Again here the linearity gives the indication of the uh, behavior compressional behavior. Second is the compressional energy area under the compressional curve. So, that is the C curve and recovery R e compressional resilience is that area under the compressional curve and by area under the recovery curve. So, this again this gives the indication of the how the compressional and recovery takes place okay. and uh, linearity shows the, the nature of compression. So, this three uh, parameters along with uh, another parameter which is the thickness. So, uh, here the setting or loading condition is that it is a rate of compression is at 0 0.02 millimeter per minute that is at that rate the compression will take place. Area of circular foot is uh, 2 square centimeter maximum compressive pressure is 5 kilo Pascal, 5 kilo Newton per square meter that means, at after that uh, reaching that uh, value it will automatically come back. The test parameter is that it is a thickness compression as a proportion of original fabric thickness EMC is expressed in percentage. So, thickness original thickness of fabric we can get and uh, fabric thickness at 5 Pascal pressure is it is expressed in terms of T o, T o is the uh, at um, lowest pressure the thickness T o and uh, W c as we have seen the compressional energy at uh, 5 kilo Pascal that is our the area under the curve and linearity of compression L c and compressional resilience R c. So, these are the parameters uh, typically we get four parameters along with the EMC uh, that is a uh, thickness compression percent. Next one and last module is that it is a KESF 4. Here it is a very important in terms of the tactile uh, comfort of clothing is concerned. So, here it measures the surface characteristics of uh, clothing. Surface characteristics in terms of two parameters one is the, uh, the friction another is it is um, uh, surface roughness. So, if you see the principle here fabric specimen it is kept under a constant tension where a constant load is 
actually it is by hanging a constant load okay, constant weight and gets to and fro motion. So, fabric at constant load gets to and fro motion and this motion is actually we get from by the rotation of drum it rotates intermittently clockwise and anti clockwise motion. So, that way the fabric moves fabric is under constant tension and it moves to and fro by rotation clockwise and anti clockwise rotation of a drum. So, this way the fabric gets uh, its motion and the frictional force between the fabric specimen and the friction surface we may change we may select any other surfaces standard surface is there, but we can select uh, uh, any other surface at the friction point to detect the frictional force. Okay. So, frictional force is detected by the force detector okay. and uh, the surface roughness is detected by the displacement detector, where the probe is placed on the fabric surface and when fabric moves laterally the due to the uneven surface of the fabric the probe moves vertically. The vertical movement of the probe due to the horizontal movement of the fabric specimen gives the indication of the surface roughness. Okay. So, vertical reflection uh, deflection of uh, the probe is the measure of surface roughness. Okay. Now, now let us see the working principle. Okay. Now, this is the fabric specimen one constant dead weight is hanging constant load to keep the fabric at certain stressed condition, certain load condition. So, that there uh, it is free of any um, wrinkle or any looseness, because we are going to measure the surface roughness for that the fabric has to be straight. Okay. And uh, the there are two detectors, one is the force detector, this is the force detector and this is the point, it is a friction point. So, the friction surface if we select this is the fabric sample if we select a fabric, um, friction surface will be the same fabric or any standard surface any and stand any metal. So, we can place that friction surface here okay. and then this uh, total uh, system is placed on the fabric and with a certain normal load standard normal load is there here it is placed and this is the friction point. Okay. So, we know the normal load and as soon as the drum rotates clockwise, this drum actually rotates clockwise and anti clockwise. So, when this drum rotates clockwise, the fabric starts moving from left to right direction and the force frictional force is generated and which is detected by the force detector here. This is this, this rod is connected with the force detector. So, this is being pulled and the, the force is actually detected here. And another detector which is uh, which detects the uh, surface roughness, this is the surface roughness detector which is nothing but a displacement detector, any uh, LVDT type any detector. So, which in, uh, detects the displacement. So, when it moves fabric moves uh, laterally, so this detector due to the surface roughness this detector moves vertically this will move uh, vertically up and down. If the fabric is very smooth suppose any any polythene sheet any sheet material there will not be any any uh, vertical movement. So, level of red um, uh, extent of vertical movement it is actually it uh, indicates the the roughness. So, uh, let us see the animation here. So, try to see this is rotating the drum is rotating clockwise. So, fabric is moving in this direction. So, force detector is detecting and here this side it is giving the frictional force. So, frictional force we know if we know the normal load. So, it directly gives the coefficient of friction value and here this is the distance traveled okay. and we get the this value the coefficient of friction versus the 
distance traveled and ultimately if we measure the mean of this value. So, this is called m i u mean value of coefficient of friction. So, m i u is a parameter which is which gives the indication of the mean friction value. So, here all other parameters constant speed and normal load these are constant we can get the m i u value which is nothing but the mean mu value mean uh, frictional coefficient value. So, another parameter we get the uh, from the this deflection for vertical deflection it is actually shown the thickness thickness at different point we can uh, indicate from this value. Okay. So, this is the deflection. So, this deflection means it is a th change in thickness at different point and here x axis is the distance traveled. So, from here we get the S m d and m m d what is S m d is the geometrical roughness geometrical roughness is the area of hast area the area of hast zone ok. This is the geometrical roughness. So, whatever and that means higher area will be that means higher roughness because, because what is the uh, deflection of the thickness of the wind and another is the MMD mean deviation of coefficient of friction. So, from here we can get the what is the mean deviation of friction. So, uh, the uh, mean deviation, so SMD we get that means geometrical roughness value we get, then MMD we get what is the deflection of friction, deviation of friction, another is the MIU, it is a mean frictional coefficient. So, from here we get three more parameters. So, if we talk uh, the total parameters, we will get uh, approximately 16 parameters we get from this four module. Now, we cannot uh, evaluate uh, our handle characteristics uh, in isolation. So, this four from because uh, if we want to know the friction it is ok, if we want to know the compressional characteristics it is ok, ok. Uh, we, we use uh, uh, module 3, if we want to know the frictional characteristics we if we, we will uh, uh, use uh, KSF 4 if we want to use a shear or tensile characteristics we can use a module 1. But if we want to know the uh, total handle related characteristics or total uh, tactile response related characteristics we have to take care of the all total all four modules. Okay. So, this uh, settings are that uh, for a transverse uh, the traverse uh, rate of uh, fabric is 1 millimeter per second constant tension uh, 0.1 Newton per centimeter normal load during friction it is a 0.1 Newton that is a fixed load it is a at that load the friction uh, takes place maximum fabric movement is 3 millimeter 3 centimeter. So, 3 centimeter it moves uh, one direction and then it comes back ok. So, test parameter m i u and m m d uh, it is a that we have discussed both are unitless and another is a for surface uh, roughness it is uh, traverse rate is same and constant tension uh, it is uh, same and uh, contact force is 0.1 Newton. Earlier case we have seen it is a 0.5 Newton for friction for thickness say it is a 0.1 Newton. If we cannot have very high uh, force otherwise it will not give the if in case of soft fabric it will not give the variation. So, ultimately we want to know the variation in thickness and uh, maximum fabric movement is same because we measure both the characteristics at, at a time to 3 centimeter movement. So, test parameters we which we get it is a SMD geometrical surface roughness ok. It is it is expressed in terms of micron. So, these are the all these parameters we uh, get from and after getting in uh, KSF system, it is already it is installed it is a it is a basically the uh, one uh, software one equation is installed K N 201 L D Y they might have come with the uh, latest one also, but this is the equation they uh, uh, get this is the generalized equation. This generalized equation y 
it is a it is a primary handle value ok obtained objectively what does what is y why we have discussed earlier like hurry uh, like um, uh, this type of uh, uh, parameters ok this parameter for particular parameter x i is the the mechanical parameter which we test. So, what we have tested 16 parameters. So, all these mechanical parameters are here ok. This is the mechanical parameter like uh, linearity uh, of compression curve, linear linearity of or tensile energy this are the curve ok. So, uh, this are the, the we can uh, we have all these parameters. So, each parameters it is expressed in terms of x i and it is a mean value of that x i and this is the standard deviation of x i. So, this is the value and ultimately here we get the coefficient. So, coefficient these are the coefficients obtained by regression analysis ok and uh, c i is the contribution ratio c, c 0 c say c o is the actually it is a coefficient it is a constant, but C i is a constant it is a contribution ratio. So, that which means for x i say a x i means a tensile energy suppose out of 16 parameters so one is for tensile energy what is the contribution of x i for a that particular value particular parameter. So, this is this gives very nice indication very good indication for this for a particular parameter and m i is the average value of x i and this is the standard deviation. And we will see uh, next uh, in next class we will see that uh, with the example for different parameters different uh, this is handle related parameters different uh, tactile parameters this uh, this c uh, the contribution value changes for for a particular significant value of uh, significant quantity. So, there uh, there are 16 parameters available, but all the parameters may not be significant for a particular uh, handle response particular response. So, for significant responses there are uh, this uh, values we can uh, see in the next class. So, till then it is uh, we will stop here. Thank you.